Hello, welcome back guys. So this is what we're aiming for in this video. I'll be showing how I do the armour plates. You can see from the model that even though it's quite a subtle look it's still quite effective. Plus it's quite simple to do and that's always a bonus. Alright so start with an even covering of Vallejo Khaki. Now swap over to Vallejo Armour Brown and carefully line between the armour plates. Just try and hit all the recesses. That's going to give uh, definition and make each section really stand out. Now it's actually very difficult to line perfectly so you can expect to have at least some mistakes. But don't worry though, just take some of your base colour and use that to even up the lines. So moving on to our first highlight now, mix a little of your highlight into your base colour. I'm using Mojave White from the Scale 75 range, but you can use Games Workshop Screaming Skull, it's basically the same. Try and keep your paint thin and pull the pigments up over the surfaces so that they come to rest on the upper edges of the armour sections. On this part here we want the, the highlight to be in the middle of the plate. So just draw the paint up to the centre from either side. You can use a, a clean damp brush to feather the lower edge. That makes sure you don't get any hard edges or staining and helps to keep the, the blend soft. So you can see I make a, a little mistake here, but you can just use another brush to draw the excess paint off the model. That's one of the benefits of using thin paint, it makes fixing mistakes a lot easier. And now for something completely different. <laughs> so just keep adding more Mojave White to your mix and continue to build up the highlight. Because this model is actually quite large, the contrast doesn't need to be as extreme as you would use in a normal miniature. Just stop adding more whenever you like the way it looks.
Okay, so switch over to Armour Brown again. This time we're going to use it as a glaze. And we're going to glaze into the lower sections, building up the shadows. For glazing, I just add a few drops of water to the paint until it looks like coloured water. Make sure you have a small amount on your brush and build up the colour over several layers. Just make sure the glaze is dry between each application. When I'm doing this, if I see if I see it's going to dry with a hard edge, while the glaze is still wet, I'll take a second brush and feather it out. So this removes the edge and helps to keep the blend smooth. If you don't feather it out, what's going to happen is it's going to dry with a horrible sort of it looks almost like a coffee stain and you really don't want that because it's it becomes difficult to it becomes really difficult to remove it once it dries that way you, you basically have to do the whole thing over again so definitely don't <laughs> allow that to happen Alright, so for the final details we'll add some simple battle damage. Start off with armour brown and add a few lines and dots. You want these to be a little ragged, so don't worry too much about being perfect. However, you do want the lines to be quite thin, so make sure you use a decent brush with a good point. Alright, now we'll come back in with Mojave white and underline the cuts. This helps to give them a, a 3D effect, giving the appearance that the armour has either been ripped or scratched. I'll add a couple in this forearm section here as well. So again, put some lines and dots with armour brown, then come back with the Mojave white and underline them. If you've never tried this technique before, just, just go for it. It's, honestly, it's a lot easier than it looks and it gives a really nice result. And here's how it should turn out. Alright, so thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, subscribe for more. And if you can, share the video with your friends. It really helps to grow the channel. Alright, so that's all from me. Thanks again. Bye for now. And where does the newborn go from here? <laughs>